Majora's Mask was a rather short game when it comes to the main story, and therefore had very few dungeons compared to the earlier games in the series, but they did a very good job to fill them up with great puzzles and the unique stray fairies. We are now gonna take a look at the 5 dungeons we had to go through in the game. We're the ones of Triforce, and here is our Majora's Mask dungeon ranking. We ensured you that the final dungeon in the games would not top all lists. For the first time, the final dungeon hits the last spot. At number 5 we have the moon. This is because it didn't really follow the regular dungeon formula. Instead, it took a very symbolic direction. When you get into the moon, all you see is a grassy field, blue skies, sunlight, and a tree in the middle. Around the tree are four kids running, and one sitting in the shadow beneath it. The four kids running around wear the masks from the bosses you have defeated earlier in the game. The kid beneath the tree wears Majora's mask. All of these seem to represent Skull Kid and the four giants, seeing as they wonder so much about friendship. Now, the reason why this one hits so low is because you can just talk to the child wearing Majora's mask, and you will get to fight Majora. It's as simple as that. If you want something that actually can resemble to a dungeon, you have to collect masks and give them to the four other children. To experience it all, you have to collect every mask in the game, and you get to play four minigames where you are supposed to find these children. Each of these minigames represent the four areas or dungeons you have already been to. In each minigame, there are gossip stones hinting to where you can obtain each mask. The Deku minigame is just about diving into flowers and move towards the other side. Easy. The Goro minigame is about rolling around the circuit. This is one of the more challenging ones. The Zora part is about swimming through many pipes, hoping to find the right way to find the child. If you go the wrong way, you'll just have to start over. The last one, representing the Stone Tower Temple, is the most fun, as you get to find a Dynafall, a Garo Master, an Iron Knuckle, and blow up a crack in the wall. If you do all this, you get the Fierce Deity Mask. Now, this is all a fine way to end the game, as this went into another direction, rather than what we have seen earlier in the series. But the reason why we rank this as number 5 is because there is nothing to do to begin with. If you collect all masks, you will get to do something more, but it isn't really that much. We feel it came short as a dungeon, even though some might not consider this as one. We have recently noticed that many people like this dungeon, but with us... We just can't stand water dungeons. The Great Bay Temple is as annoying as pretty much any other water level. Just like the water temple, this one is about controlling the water. Instead of raising or lower it, you have to change currents. This whole place is like a huge factory, and you need to change the directions and stuff to make the gears go the other way. And the streams can be very annoying. Luckily, you can move more freely in the water because of the Zora Mask but it isn't always easy to control. Even though it made a much better use of the ice arrows than the Ocarina of Time, this place is also filled with annoying enemies, it's easy to get lost, and it's pretty much a very annoying dungeon to go through, as we also spend a lot of time in water. Plus, we do find it weird that the source actually look at this place as their temple. Not that it matters much. Woodfall Temple is one of the best first dungeons in the series. It's a very dark, jungle-like temple that is filled with poisonous water and has a great theme. There are some annoying and some good enemies to fight inside here. It did have some interesting puzzles too, like using the bow and arrow to light torches and the helicopter flowers, or whatever, though it can be a bit too much at times. Generally, it's a fun dungeon, and like I said, it's one of the best first dungeons in the series. We were very unsure about which one's better between Snowhead and Woodfall Temple, since Snowhead had a lot of annoying things in it. But it was just more challenging. When I talk about annoying things, I mean like falling down places since there are so many levels here, and especially it's falling down from, well, anywhere in the main room. Controlling a rolling Goron isn't always easy either. Another very annoying thing is that in certain rooms, once you leave the room after melting ice to solve puzzles, it will just be frozen again the next time you enter. 
it never stays the same, which makes you use a lot of magic and arrows. It's also a bit easy to get lost here, as there are so many ways to go. The challenging parts are to race to the pillar in the middle, and then later find out that you have to knock those discs out of place, so that the whole thing becomes lower and opens a way to the boss. So, even though it can be very annoying, it's also a bit challenging, and we do like challenges, don't we? All of you knew this already, didn't you? The number one dungeon in Majora's Mask is of course the Stone Tower Temple. But we gotta say, it's not our favorite dungeon in the series. It is more challenging since you have to use all three transformation masks, but the thing that really made this temple is flipping it upside down. If it wasn't for that, the whole place would have been pretty dull. But because of the flipping, the design was pretty cool when you could see chests hanging upside down from the ceiling and such. Some rooms look the same once you flip it, while many other rooms look totally different. And it's always nice to look down at the stars for a change. But there are some things that are really annoying. You'll probably get tired of playing the Elegy of Emptiness to create statues even before you enter this temple. And you have to do it a lot inside too. And maybe forget to change the mask so that you move the statue already made, and have to make another one. Oh well, despite all these annoying things, this is the dungeon that gave us the greatest challenge, and definitely was the most innovative. So, we saved the monkey, brought warmth to the mountains, got the band's lead singer in the mood again, and lifted the curse in Alcana. To appreciate our work, why don't you like this video, comment, or even subscribe? Thanks for watching.